Welcome back on the AM Show. We get into our first big story, and it's all about energy, oil, or in this case, gas. So Parliament's Mines and Energy Committee is asking questions about a GNPC deal with Genza Energy. GNPC has a gas supply deal with a company called Genza Energy and has been criticized by some minority uh, groups or the minority in Parliament, as well as civil society groups, Imani Africa, Africa Center for Energy Policy, as one which will cause financial loss to the state. According to them, Ghana buys gas for $95.8 million and sells it on to Genza for $43.5 million, leading to a net loss, uh, if you strike the average, of 52 million American dollars. Now, no one does business to lose. So why is this happening, if it is indeed happening? We delve into these matters with our guests. Ben Boache is the executive director of ASAP. There's also Kojopoku, who is an energy analyst, and John Jinapo, former deputy power minister. He joins the conversation as well. Gentlemen, a very good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so I'm going to have to determine uh, who are those responding? Whom do I have, please? Uh, <laughs> I think I should on the screen. Do, do, do I have Mr. Janapo? Yes, 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 you have. Great. So uh, you have uh, Ben Boache as well. Okay, so I have John Janapo, I have Ben Boache. Uh, let, let's, start, let's start from the standpoint of civil society and the red flags you've been raising. So you're saying basically that this deal is inimical to the fortunes of the state because, like I pointed out, uh, even state institutions would want to at least break even, not incur losses. Break down what is happening to us between the GNPC, Genza Energy, and why Ghana Gas as a whole should come into the fray. Um, thanks, Ben. I think, uh, first of all, I mean, what we have been trying to do is to stay on an agreement that we have seen. Okay. I understand that there could be some tough war that we don't have the full facts on. Mm. But we have seen an agreement that has been established uh, between Ghana, uh, uh, you know, National Oil Company, uh, GNPC, and uh, Jensa, which is a private uh, company. And in that agreement, right. uh, GNPC is selling gas uh, for 2.79 dollars per MMBTU uh, to Gensa for the infrastructure that they have constructed uh, from Pristia to Daman and Takwa and also an extension uh, to um, some bauxite mines in their chateau. So the fundamental question that we raised um, is why that discount? Because the market price for gas is, was about $6.08. Uh, dollars at the time. So why that huge discount? I mean, government can give discount to some productive sectors uh, to prop them up, but it has to be clearly established what the country stands to gain uh, from that massive uh, discount. But we did not see, you know, the, the, the benefit for this kind of transaction because Gensa essentially is a power company. So what they are doing is using uh, the gas that they get from uh, GMPC uh, to generate electricity and sell to uh, the mines. And we do know that in the gas market price, uh, transmission is part of uh, the, the, the cost. So if you are a transporter, you are, you, you're paid for transporting the gas. We do not subsidize the gas for the transmission of you know, the, the gas. So it has, it's an add-on to the actual cost uh, of the gas. And that is why we are struggling to see how the commodity, the, the, the cost of the gas itself, is being subsidized for Gensa uh, to use for the mines, instead of Gensa adding on the transmission cost uh, to its customers, who are the, the mines, really. Because uh, if VR regenerates electricity, it sells to all of us, you know, with a transmission charge embedded in, in it. So why does a mine, you know, get such a huge discount? Uh, because there is an infrastructure that benefits them. 
uh, uh, you know. So these are the questions that we are raising. And it is a simple arithmetic. If you calculate the discount uh, that we are giving on the gas against, you know, what, uh, you know, Gensa is actually paying or the true market uh, price, what we are giving to Gensa is about $1.5 billion. And that is easy to calculate. All right, GMPC itself in its tariff proposal to uh, PURC indicated that the true market price for everybody else because of this transaction should be about 7.9 per MMBTU. Today, PURC has approved a new tariff at 5.9, which creates about $2 gap in the market without knowing who is going to pay that difference for us to achieve that true market price that GMPC talks about. So if you compute that, the $2 uh, gap between the 5.9 approved and the 7.9, what GMPC itself says, should be the true market price. That creates, you know, about even $3.6 billion within a 16-year period, unless PRC agrees to charge all the other power producers the extra uh, $2. Then the fundamental question is, how do we pay for that if, you know, that $2 is not passed through uh, to the other consumers? And if they pass that through, what would be the implication for all other consumers uh, of power? Because it means that you and I will have to pay more, you know, to be able to subsidize uh, for Gensa, you know, who is making money by selling uh, uh, to the mines. So these are legitimate. In, in, in other words, uh, this is a loss to the state, a loss that will trickle down to the ordinary Ghanaian because through, through taxes. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Let me break that, that even home, right? Um, Ghana Gas and, um, you know, GMPC sells the gas in the market and they are supposed to recover the value of the gas, at least at the barest minimum, how much it takes to produce the gas. They're supposed to recover that, you know, so that the state doesn't intervene. But the reality is that the state has been paying for gas because we cannot recover uh, the full cost of the gas. Two weeks ago, E and I drew down on Ghana's letters of credit with Stand Standard Chartered Bank to the tune of $180 million because GMPC couldn't pay for the gas. In total, the outstanding LCU drawdown is about $360 million dollars which we have to pay, which will be calculated and accounted for in the new negotiation uh, with the IMF, all right? And it is clear that this month and the last month's bill will still be paid by the state. And this is because GMPC is selling the gas at a discount to France, all right? And they are not able to recover the true cost. We are not sanitizing the space to allow the full cost of the gas to be recovered so that taxes don't go to pay for it. You know, so now the state has to find money instead of building schools, instead of building hospitals, instead of, you know, financing social development to go and pay for discounts that have been granted by GMPC. So interesting points you make. Uh, let me just avert your mind to this right before I bring in John Janapo. I just want clarity from you on this. Uh, yesterday, of course, there was that engagement, uh, parliament and the GMPC's leadership and Dr. Amin Adam, the Deputy uh, Energy Minister, made the point that you, that is Imani Africa and ASEP, do not have the full facts. And instead of seeking the full facts from the GMPC, you have gone ahead to put this out there to, to throw dust, seemingly, in the eyes of the public. Why have you not gone to the GMPC for the full details of what uh, is happening, or are you apprised already of all of that? No, I think we can, we can appreciate what the minister wants or what the government official wants from civil society. But the reality is that when it comes to advocacy strategy, we don't take it from politicians. Uh, we decide what strategy works uh, for us. Unless the minister is saying that the agreement that has been signed is not credible. I mean, this is data that any student can peruse and understand. If we take that document and believe that what they have signed is the truth, then we can do analysis based on that without even asking GMP to come and give us further explanation. And even to look at what they did to Parliament yesterday, it tells you that 
if we had gone to GMPC for explanation, we're just simply wasting our time. Because how, you have how so? GMPC coming how so? before Parliament. You have GMPC coming before Parliament. And they present data that is completely different from what they have signed in the agreement. All right? In the agreement, GMPC says, we are giving you a discount on the gas. And it is written in black and white English. Right? And then they go to Parliament to say that it is not a discount on the gas, but we are rather applying industrial development tariff. You know, and then came up with a different calculation to achieve the discount uh, that they gave uh, to, to, to Jensen. Even assuming that you're applying uh, the industrial development tariff, why do you further discount that? Even if the industrial development tariff is 4.2, why do you discount that again uh, further to uh, $1.7 uh, per uh, MMBTU? So it clearly tells you that they're just trying to explain away with English and get away with this kind of uh, uh, financial crime that is being committed against the state. So, so just clarify for me, you think something is being hidden? No, but I mean, it's clear. If, if even before Parliament, they couldn't speak to the agreement, you know, that they have signed. Um, it clearly tells you that they are not willing to um, give you the, full, uh, the, the real intent uh, uh, of what they are doing. But we right. also have to pay mm -hmm. attention to the, the actual fact. Okay. That if you are creating that subsidy, how does the budget absorb that? Okay. Well, All we'll, right. And that conversation is, you know, very important. We'll, we'll come we to that. Shown we'll that come to that all important point. Just hold for me, uh, Mr. Boache. Let me bring in John Janapo on, on this matter. Just, just stay on that. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. But, Mr. Janapo, so you've heard from Deputy Energy Minister, Dr. Amin Adam, who says, look, uh, you're merely looking for something where there's actually nothing. You should have just gone to the GNPC. Mr. Boache says it would have been a futile attempt to go to the GNPC, uh, looking at the fact that what figures there are in terms of the contract, the deal, and what they are putting forth are not uh, commensurable. How do you feel about this entire development? Is there a rat somewhere? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. First of all, let me comment a uh, let me commend Imani for bringing this issue to the fore. That is how you work with civil society. And what parliaments do is that when such issues come up, our duty is to take it up, investigate it, deal with the matter conclusively. And so it will be very, very wrong to accuse Imani or ASAP of any wrongdoing. Indeed, today we are all discussing this issue because these two civil society organizations decided to bring the issues to the fore. And that is exactly what we sought or seeking to do as a parliamentary committee. And so yesterday, indeed, we met GMPC. A lot of issues came up. They couldn't answer some of the issues I raised with them. And so they are supposed to go back, finish us with further and better particulars and appear before us. But let me just give you a quick genesis of all this issue. And these are the issues we are looking at. Is there value for money? Did they go through the right processes? Is the state benefiting? And all the issues except also raised. Don't forget that Ghana Gas and Jensa had an initial agreement. I think the agreement was signed on the 24th of 20th April, 2018. At that time, the WACO, which is the weighted average cost of gas, was about 7.9. Then, for some very strange reason, Ghana Gas receives instructions from the minister then, Mr. Pichando, to reduce the tariff to 6.5. That, for us, is the key issue we want to investigate. And that's what Ben raised. Why would you classify that company as an industrial company and apply the industrial tariff. That for me is very, very important. Why are you not doing the same for GM, uh, VRA, for Ameri, and for the other plants? Why this particular plant? Ghana Gas also decided that Jensa, which wanted to do a 12 inch pipeline, should rather expand it to a 20 inch pipeline. Why would Ghana Gas make that decision? Today, as a stance, we are paying capacity charges for that pipeline. 
Genza is a private entity. And so usually my focus is on Ghana Gas, GMPC, and government. Why extend that pipeline from 12 to 20? When you know very well that you don't have that gas to flow through that pipeline. And so that is very, very important for me. And in the Ghana Gas Academy, but, Ghana mm. Gas was supposed to pay $3.6 million per month for 96 months if they wanted to own that 135-kilometer pipeline. That brings it to $345 million. That's quite a colossal amount. And so I'm asking myself, what investment appraisal analysis did they do? Was there value for money? And so clearly, GMPC couldn't answer some of these questions. And so Ghana Gas would have to appear before Parliament so that we can deal with this issue. So that's the aspect of Ghana Gas. Now let me deal with GMPC. Uh, before, before you get into the GMPC, so those two crucial matters you raise, the classification of the company as an industrial company, and then the bit about why the extension of the pipeline came to be from 12 kilometers to 20 kilometers. Two questions on From each. 12 inches to 20 inches. 12 inches to 20 That's inches, fine. So 12 inches to 20 inches. That's uh, an addition of eight inches. So just to clarify, is it impossible in this instance for Genza to be classified as an industrial company or entity? Did, what exactly is the error there? Is it totally out of scope for them to be classified as such? That is why we are, well, that, that's what we are, that's what we are investigating. What went into that decision? And like Ben said, don't also forget that VRA is a state-owned entity. So if you sell the gas at 7.9 to VRA, why would you sell it at 6.5 to another entity? We need all these answers as a parliamentary select committee. And that's why we are bringing these entities before us to provide the justification. I'm, I'm not even dealing with the cost of the pipeline and all. I'm just saying that why that disparity is something that I think that we ought to go into and determine that. I haven't established that. Uh, uh, I, I just want us to go step by step. I, I know you, no. your horse is rearing to go on some, I'm ready for you. some, some of the matters. But so if, if, if you were not sure, certain uh, on, on the bit about its classification, the classification of the company, because the information out there is categorical. You, you just said it that you've questioned them on why the company was categorized as such and that the answers given you by the GMPC were not satisfactory. Does that mean you still think the categorization was wrong? Um, That's ben, why we need... Can I ask that? Ben, can I help them? Kojo, Kojo, please hold. Just hold. Just, just hold for me. This. I'll come to you, please. Just no, hold I for me. I want to answer that question for him. No, I, I want him to give me... Because they have come out with, with an idea. I want him to state the basis on which they came up. So, uh, yeah, Mr. Janapo, the answer to that. I want to give you the answer to that. Th there's a reason I want Mr. Janapo to answer. I'll come to you, Kojo. Mr. Janapo. Yes. Yeah, so, government would have to come and answer that because we're a fact-finding committee. PRC would have to come and answer that. And uh, like I said, the agreement was between Ghana Gas and Genza. So, GMPC said they couldn't answer that. And you see, we are an independent fact-finding committee. And so we have to put this question you are putting before us to all these entities and organizations. And like I told you, GMPC was unable to answer why they decided to classify them as an industrial customer because it was an agreement between Ghana Gas and Genza. So we've summoned Ghana Gas. Ghana Gas will appear before us on Monday and we would uh, probe that further as a committee. Next point, so you, you question why it's been increased from 12 inches to 20 inches, uh, an increment of 8 inches, which will come with uh, cost. Again, are you, are you intimating then that by this there was something cooked, something untaught? In other words, is it going to be a waste to the state, the additional inches of the pipeline? Is it going to be a waste? So as a stance, Jensa wants to do a 12-inch pipeline. If you request them to do a 20-inch pipeline, mm -hmm. you are asking them to go raise additional financing. And so whether you utilize that additional capacity or not, you ought to pay for that. Currently, we are not utilizing that additional capacity, and we are paying for that. So that amounts to what you call excess capacity payments. 
if you were to put it in very simple terms. But they have gone ahead to raise financing to construct a 20-inch pipeline instead of a 12-inch pipeline. You are not flowing the required volumes of gas through the 20-inch pipeline in order to utilize it. But they have to pay their financiers. And so we are paying for it. And when we asked GMPC, they came up with some ideas about an integrated box site that they had envisaged and all that. And so clearly, we ought to establish why would you do that? Moreover, do you even have the volume of gas to flow through that pipeline? And I ask, what is the maximum all the fields can produce? If I account for all the maximum all the fields can produce, I'm clear in my mind that we cannot fully utilize that pipeline today. Uh, Mr. Janapo, just hold for me. Let me bring in Kojo Poku. Kojo, you can, you can uh, share your thoughts on, on that now. Because the, the accusations have been made, I wanted Mr. Janapo to at least share what his specific thinking was on that. Uh, Kojo, over well, to you. Let me look. Jensa is an IPP. So that is why everybody is saying that if you are doing that for Jensa, you should do that for other companies. Jensa is an independent power producing company. They produce power and sell to the mining companies. They are like Ameri, they are like Car Power, they are like, um, what do you call it, Car Power and uh, Asogli. The difference between Asogli, Car Power, and Jensa is that Jensa builds these power plants for the mines. They generate the power using gas and sell it to the mining companies. So you cannot classify them as an industrial company when they are an IPP, because the license they have from Energy Commission is an IPP company. So that is the clarification I wanted to give. Uh, that is why you can't classify them as an industrial company. They are an IPP. So per the contractual ag agreement then, if they are classified as an industrial company, automatically there's a problem. It's wrong. You can't do that. It's wrong. H how did we end up yeah, here then? Saying, how did we end up here then with this, with this classification? Okay, so let me, let me explain. Let me explain further, okay? So let's understand what Jensa is. Jensa is a company that has been operating as far back as 2012. They have plants in the mines that they put in there, and they've been using LPG and other sources to generate gas for uh, to generate power for the LH for the mining companies during the Doomso era. Okay. Now, along the line, when Ghana Gas built the pipeline from um, the Aboise to Pristia, it means that gas was now available closer to where their customers were, or where their customers are. So when the gas got to Pristia, um, Jensa now went into a contractual agreement with Ghana Gas to obtain the power from Pristia and extend it to their customers. But this is where it gets a bit uh, tricky. There was a letter from Energy Commission in 2019 now, at all points, Jensa have seeked to get discount because they are saying that, look, we are building the transmission lines to our customers. And because we are building the transmission lines to our customers, you should give us a bit of a discount or we are going to use more gas than any other person. It's a business. It's a private man. He always wants the best for his customers. So he asks them for a discount. It's not a problem. They wrote to Energy Commission in 2019. And Energy Commission told um, Ghana Gas that they cannot give a discount to um, Jensa because um, everybody has to buy on the weighted average because it's a regulated market. GMPC, who owns the gas, takes the gas at a take or pay from ENA. So you cannot deregulate it and let everybody go about and sell it the way they want it. So there is a letter which from Energy Commission explains that you cannot give the gas out discounted. But they now put a caveat and said that, look, even if you want to give a discount, that discount has to be a refund for the investment that they are making. So this is what it means. If Jensa is prepared to build a pipeline and you want to give them a discount for the investment, then that discount you are giving them for the investment should be a refund for the investment, which means in the long term, that pipeline will have to be owned by the state because the state would have refunded them for the investment. Now, something very curious in GMPC's presentation to Parliament yesterday. They keep mentioning we reserve capacity. My point to GMPC is very simple. 
Gensa only builds pipeline to their customers. Now, why are you reserving capacity on that pipeline? What benefit is it to you? Now, if you follow the Energy Commission um, advice, if you give him the discount, in the long run, you will own that pipeline. So why are you reserving capacity? And in some cases, they say that they are reserving capacity for 25 years at an extra nine years. Who is making that decision? A pipeline that we can own. We are letting the person own it, give him a discount, and say that we are reserving capacity. The guy is only building pipeline to his customers. So why are you reserving capacity on that pipeline? Does that mean does that mean that stands technically does not make sense? That approach. It does not. No, it does not make sense. And for me, I'm very sad that the parliamentarians did not call and um ask to the meeting. Because I think as civil society, I mean ASAP and Imani raised the issue. And when they were calling um, um GMPC, they should have called the civil society for us to come. Because we have sat down and done the analysis. Ben has spent a lot of time on this matter. We've all sat and looked at the data. And let not anybody, and I'm very surprised the minister um, is defending this thing. GMPC has come out to say that they are not government. GMPC is an entity on its own. They have a board. They have a board chairman. Why is the minister defending them? Before ASAP comes up with anything, before Imani comes up with anything, the likes of us, the likes of Dr. Manteo, the fact of a lot of people look at this data, and we are convinced that there's something wrong going on. The state is being cheated. And somebody will come out and say, oh, uh, somebody has got it wrong. They have got it wrong. It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, because you are intimating the state is being cheated and the state is retorting that, look, you're, you don't have your facts right. We'll, we'll get into that. I'll, 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 I'll go back to Benjamin Boache shortly. But, but stay with me, Kojopoku. So we've heard from the chairman of the committee. We've, we've, we've heard from the chairman, okay, Samuel Atachia. He says, you as a group of CEOs, after conducting your research, you should have gone to the GNPC. Uh, you, you did not do that. Why? Okay, so let me explain. When you are doing analysis, you need information from both sides. Most of these information are public knowledge. As Ben reiterated, the agreement that they have signed, which is the subject of the analysis, is a public document. Okay? So if there is an agreement between two entities... I look at the civil society space, we look at these documents, look at the letter from GMPC, sorry, from Energy Commission. We look at letter from even EMT, Economic Management Team, directing that somebody should be made to sell power to only the power supplies and somebody should be made to do this. We look at all of this and ask ourselves, the supreme concern is, is Ghana getting value for money? Is Ghana being cheated? And as per the agreement, if me and you, we use electricity, we are paying more for power, the gas that we use, we are paying at 6.08. But a private company who makes money as a private individual and makes profit into his pocket is getting that gas cheaper. And the reason somebody is doing that is because they are reserving capacity on a pipeline. Meanwhile, that pipeline he's building, we have not cited any law that allows a private company to own pipelines. So I think G um, Ghana Gas is the only company that we know are allowed, and I stand to be corrected. I think Ghana Gas is the only company that we know is allowed by law to basically build these pipelines. So if they want to make the investment, then it should be a boot, build, operate, and transfer. After they have recovered um, the investment through the discount you are giving them. So if we do this right, all the pipelines that these guys, Gensa, is building, in the long run, after they recovered the investment through the discount, should now be owned by the state, and they should pay us for transmitting those, through those pipelines, not the reverse. Uh, Mr. Wache, what else do you find dodgy about this entire contract? Because it appears as we peel it like an onion, layer by layer, there seem to be many problems. The categorization of the company as an industrial one. Uh, the, the, the pipeline that must be constructed and the size of it, the extension of it, and excess power and all of that. But what else do you find problematic, uh, you know, uh, about this entire contract? No, I think the whole arrangement doesn't sit well uh, with us. And, um, and that's what we're raising the concerns. I mean, I heard Honorable uh, uh, Yenapo say that... Uh, the approval of 6.5 was wrong in the first place. And if you check 
the letter that was written by the Energy Commission. It was really to correct that. It means that it was wrong, and the Commission sought to correct that wrong. So they responded to Ghana Gas to say that you cannot give them industrial tariff because they are power users. What you can do is to give them a rebate on the transmission charge so that that pays for the investment and then you can own it. So subsequently, Ghana Gas, I'm told, and I've seen some documents also from uh, floating, that they also signed an agreement with Jensa to refer to the WACOG or the weighted average cost of gas approved by PURC as a reference price for their engagement with Jensa. So what that means is that Ghana Gas was now beginning to respond to the regulatory uh, agencies and to price the gas at that level. All right. So I think that's where GMPC was not, uh, Jensa was not happy. And then they went to GMPC, got ministerial approval, uh, approvals, got EMT uh, declaration that um, uh, Ghana Gas cannot sell to power uh, producers, you know, so that that allows GMP to then negotiate with Jensa on this agreement that has become the subject of this uh, uh, conversation. But check it. If EMT, you know, bars Ghana Gas from selling to power consumers, except industrial consumers, so what that means is that Ghana Gas is supposed to sell to industrial consumers and uh, GMPC is supposed to sell uh, to power consumers. How then does GMPC now get into an agreement that says that it is selling gas to Jensa uh, for an industrial tariff? You know, so the explanations that are coming, and that's why I'm surprised that you know those explanations were given to Parliament, and uh, Mr. Tachina says he's happy uh, with GMPC and not with civil society. Uh, for raising questions on numbers that are in the document, <laughs> all right? So those are the fundamental questions. And I expect that Parliament will perhaps pay more attention to the numbers that we have put out. We would have been happy to hear um, uh, Honorable Atachia and uh, Honorable Katie Hammond speak to the numbers and say that there is no subsidy and also compute, you know, the 3.26 that has been given on the uh, uh, existing infrastructure and a federal discount to uh, 4.3 uh, uh, on the extension to uh, Kumasi, and say that those numbers do not discount the price by $1.5 billion. That way they will be you know, telling the truth to the Ghanaian public. But just to simply say that we are being sensational <laughs> without speaking to the numbers, you are not being fair to the conversation that we are having at this point. Uh, uh, for, for the national interest. And I think we have to stay with the numbers. Mm. Let GMPs to justify why we should go and buy gas on the average, 6.08, and they want to sell it at 7.29. That gap has to be accounted for. And that is all we are asking for. Right. We have to put the numbers together and justify why that decision and why Gensard merits that kind of subsidy, which the Ghanaian public is going to pay. Right. It's not for free. Let, let me bring in John Jinapur. Uh, even before we talk about the $100 million loss that we stand to incur per year, let's look at the pricing and why you feel it was wrong in the first place for them to be getting the units of gas for $6.50 and not something upwards. The, the contract would suggest that they had the option. In fact, they had made a commitment to pay between $6.50 and $7.29. Of course, any rational organization would opt for that which is on the lower end of the spectrum. This was according to the WACOG. What exactly is problematic about it if they, they had this range and the minister suggested that they go for the least range? Yeah, so the first thing is that does the minister have that power to decide that a regulated market, which is regulated by the PURC, they should rather charge an industrial tariff. And that is where I fault government. I thought that this should be an issue for PURC. And so this is a key issue that we are dealing with. And we will also be inviting PURC. Let me assure Ese that I made a, 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 a case to the chairman, and the chairman determines how the meeting goes, that we should invite Ese, we should invite Imani, and also listen to them. Because we want to get to the bottom of this matter. And like I said, it will be wrong for the minister. And if you look at the letter, the minister, uh, the letter from Ghana Gas dated 21st August 
The then minister, Mr. Peter Mingu, unilaterally decides that they should be granted an industrial tariff. But that is not even the key issue. I was, I was building a point so that we appreciate what happens. Now, the EMT under Dr. Mahmoud Balbia, for very strange reasons, decides that Ghana gas should no longer sell power to the power producers. That, that for me is very, very strange. Don't forget they were paying 6.5. When the EMT decides that Ghana gas should no longer sell and that GNPC should now sell, this existing 6.5 was terminated. And then GNPC then goes to sign a new agreement on the same pipeline for 4.2. That that's a major issue that, as, as, as a ranking member, I want to delve into. Why would a 6.5 change to 4.2? GNPC made a preposition. That is because the workup changed from 7.9 to 6.08. If you do the rate of reduction from 7.9 to 6.08 and the rate of reduction from 6.5 to 4.2, for me, I have serious questions and serious problems with that. Is, is, it, so, is it more? Is it more the reduction that was given then? Less. It's more. The reduction is more comparative to the work of reduction. So, so you agree at least that, rationally speaking, Based on the reduction on the other end, there should have been a reduction for Genza. It's just that the reduction was too much in terms of how much they'd be paying that, that, per, that, that per is unit. Something, that is what we want to go in. And like all of us have said, why would you sell the gas to the other power plants at 6.08 but sell to only one entity for 4.2? Why would you do that? What, what, what informs that? Then GNPC also decides that the pipeline to Kumasi should now be 24 inches. Already, this 20-inch pipeline, which was moved from 12 to 20, you are not utilizing it. Despite all the mines that are within that entity. Now, you are supplying power to only Ameri for now, and you are asking them to increase it to 24 inch. But there's even a major issue there. If I may just share this with you, I don't know if that was possible. I would have just shared the current, um, let me open, the current PURC tariff approval. If you look at the weighted average cost of gas, the PURC approved tariff is 4.4499. That is the commodity price, the commodity. When you are determining the gas of price, there are three main items, the commodity, the processing, and the transportation. So if the commodity is 4.449, and you go to sell it at 2.79 or even 2.9, what it means is that you cannot pay the, 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 the producers of gas at the fields. I, I don't know if you get my point. I do. Minimum, you must sell minimum break even, so that the gas that you are off taking from our fields you are able to pay for that gas. Surprisingly, GNPC told us, no, it will be 5.9. I perused all the documents, we couldn't find a 5.9. So I asked that, yes, assuming it's 5.9, I want a full breakdown of the 5.9. What is the commodity, what is the trend, everything. So that I would classify them into commodity, processing, and transmission. And know which goes where. That could not be provided yesterday. So the chairman is directed. The GNPC goes back and recalculates the components of that so-called 5.9 and make it available to the committee. And so I share... So, so the calculation of, of the 5.9 was an afterthought, after you brought it up? After I brought the issue of the work of, because with a weighted average cost of gas, you cannot go below the lowest you must at a, at, a, at, a, at a minimum charge the average price so that at least you break even. But when you are charging below even the minimum, then you are making a loss, which means the state must step in in order to fill that void. So I raised serious issues even with the whole computation they brought with even the 4.2. And they said, no, 
it should have rather been 5.9. I said, give me the breakdown of the 5.9 I'll do the analysis. That has not been answered. And so we still have a lot to investigate, a lot to deal with in order to ensure that we get to the bottom of this matter. Mm. Because there was a persistent or existing contract between Ghana Gas and Jensen. Why would the economic management team decide that they want to vary that by taking a decision that Ghana Gas can no longer sell to Jensen? And why is it that just after they took that decision, that contract was suspended, GMPC moves in, and we see a reduction to 4.2. And of that, GMPC gets only 2.7. The question is that the 2.7 that GMPC gets, is it enough to pay the Jubilee, Tain, and the Sankofa partners? If that is not enough, like we are demonstrating, then there's a shortfall. So these are very serious issues mm. that are being raised. And I really commend ASAP and Imani and all those people who are raising those issues. We are not targeting any company. I have no interest in targeting any company. I've had so many comments. All I want to do is to get to the bottom of this matter so that we bring all the facts out. And if there are suggestions, if there are recommendations, we would make sense. And so let nobody try to target any civil society, any individual, and put it as if they are on a vendetta. No, 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 no. We are doing a legitimate job. We are doing a service to the nation. And we intend to pursue that to its logical conclusion. Let me bring in Kojopoku. Uh, when you look at the figures, the, the, the facts, the numbers, at least if we are to stick to them, uh, how workable are they? You just heard John Dinapo make mention of the fact that, look, you cannot have a commodity price pegged at 4.49 and sell at 2.9. That will be a net loss of about $2 or so per unit. What it then means is that you cannot pay your power producers and it's going to incur debt, debt which will roll over to the ordinary Ghanaian. The GMPC now says that the actual figure is 5.9. What are we missing, Kojo? Do we have Kojo Poku with us? Um, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Please go ahead. Okay, yes. Uh, aside that, let me put this out there. Aside that, Jensa are um, going to negotiate the molecules, the gas directly with GMPC. They were to pay the transmission of the gas to Ghana Gas. Now, for some mysterious reasons, they don't even pay Ghana gas. As I speak. Now, my checks at Ghana gas says that they owe Ghana gas. Let's look at it this way earlier. They sell power directly to the mine. So these mines do not take power from the national grid. Kojo, we're struggling a bit with your connection, Kojo. So um, uh, we'll try to work it out. I'll have you make that point again, start afresh, because we lost chunks of what you were saying. But I'll put that same question to Benjamin Boache. Uh, how do we fill in the gaps? And, and do you take the 5.9 that the GMPC, its revised figure, is that more, is that more logical? looking at the arrangement with Jensa. Quick one so we can bring in Kojo back. Yeah, so the 5.9 uh, figure is the PRC regulated tariff mm -hmm. uh, for uh, you know, the market. Uh, GMPC itself says that that price should actually be 7.9 to be able to account for their arrangement and contract with um, Jensa. So what that means, as I indicated, is that there is a $2 gap which has to be accounted for. And by all indications, it shows that PRC is not considering GMP's arrangement with uh, Jensa in calculating its price for the market. So if the market pays 5.9 today, and the actual price should be 7.9, according to GMPC, 
Then there is a two dollar gap, which would you know create that uh, uh, three point six billion in sixteen years, as we are indicating. So we really need to find out how we pay for that. And I think GMPC really at this point doesn't care whether they are able to pay for the gas or not, because finance ministry will pay. All right. When they go to attack the LCs, the Ministry of Finance will have to find money to go and pay. So they are happy to discount for some people, and they are happy to do whatever they have to do uh, as an entity. But we need to interrogate that and ensure that we can bring sanity uh, to uh, the market. Okay. And the arbitrariness mm. in the sector has to be checked. All right. you know, so what it means is that if I want gas today and I can go and see the minister, the minister can just by a stroke of a pen decide that he's selling the gas to me at 1.7. Whether it costs Ghana money or not, it is not the matter to consider. All right. These are problems that perhaps parliament now has to take the decision to be part of that conversation so that the public press doesn't continue to bleed the way it is. All right, Benjamin, watch it. Oh. Isolated decisions and it mm. comes back to hurt everybody. All right, hold for me. Let me bring in Kojo Poku, who now joins us via the phone lines. Kojo, uh, you are making a point. Start from the top. A, a show on communication in this country. Energy suffers too much. Communication is a key. We can't even do our show properly with all these networks not working well. Let, let me now go back into the point I was making, Ben. Um, okay, so what I was saying is this. We all remember about capacity charges. We say that, look, we've procured power that if it's a take or pay, if we don't have money, um, we don't use this uh, power, we have to pay the IPPs for these capacity charges. And you look at Gensa producing power to the mine. Now, Gensa is giving gas cheaper, uh, sorry, is giving gas cheaper. Government is having to subsidize that shop for, from all the calculations that my John and Ben have put out there. Okay, so now on that leg, government is losing money on that side. Then go to the capacity charge. This mine, if it wasn't for Gensa, would be consuming power on the national grid. So the power that we are not using, which is a capacity charge, where we are paying the take or pay because it's contract we've signed and we are not fully utilizing all the power, we are now also paying take or pay because nobody's using the power. If it wasn't for Gensa producing cheaply for these mining companies, the mining companies would be on a national grid to also consume the power that otherwise we are paying take or pay for. So on both ends of the spectrum, the government is losing money as a, as a result of this deal. And what everybody should look at this conversation is a group of people being Ghanaian. Anytime that civil society have come out to say some of these things, we've been called all sorts of names. At a point, we've been called anti Ghana. When we are the ones trying to save Ghana money, and people are defending a deal that makes Ghana lose its money. So if somebody is coming out to say that, look, you signed a deal which is costing you about $1.5 billion, everybody should be worried because we recently collected $750 million from, um, from a loan, which came in and everybody was happy. But you have one single transaction from GMPC costing the country $1.5 billion on one leg. Don't talk of the capacity charges that we are paying as a result of those mining companies not taking power from the national grid. So that is the problem. I don't see how anybody is not interested in conversations that save Ghana money. In all thoughts, and I want us to incorporate some aspects of the discussion we've already had. Benjamin Wachi just made mention of the fact that the arbitrariness in the sector must be checked because guess what? Any minister who comes uh, may, you know, exercising his discretion with the stroke of a pen, sign this off like uh, we've seen in this instance, uh, pending justification or pending whether uh, this was right or wrong. And that could be inimical to the economic fortunes of the state. But that minister would have done that. One, how do we resolve that? And two, what role should the PURC be playing in all of this? Or is it too late for the PURC to intervene? Quick answers to these two questions, each of you, one minute, and it's a wrap. I'll start with you, uh, Kojo. Well, please, the institutions should work. Look, we clearly saw and we've clearly seen that uh, the institutions can work if they are allowed to work. We've seen the letter from Energy Commission. Energy Commission rightfully told Ghana Gas what the law is and what the policy is. If the institution work, 
then everybody doesn't need to go to the politicians to intervene. And the politicians should stay away when the institutions are working. So PULC does what they are supposed to do. Energy, Energy Commission gives clarity and also do these policies and enforces them. So when there was a transaction between Ghana Gas and Gensa, the institution was working. Energy Commission was able to give clarity. And if everybody had stayed on the fringes and let the institutions work, we wouldn't be where we are today. But the minute Gensa found their way to GMPC, GMPC now managed to get the minister and the EMT involved. And for me, it's very strange. Why is the EMT getting involved in this? I, it, 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 it's, it's a situation where the economic management team is supposed to look at policies that make us money. These are a situation where the economic management team is making policies that's making us lose money. So that, for me, is strange. So the bottom line is the institution should be allowed to work. Ministers and all politicians should stay away and let the technocrats do their work. Kojo, we're grateful that you've, uh, you, you joined us for this conversation. Kojo Poko is an energy analyst. Uh, let me bring in John Janapo, former deputy power minister. Your take? Hello, Mr. Janapo. Yes, yes. First of all, it does appear that the EMT is overstretching its bound. If you remember the famous PDS scandal, mm. it's the same vice president who decided to vary and waive some of the conditions president. Today, the same vice president is getting involved in this deal and shortchanging Ghana gas. And so I think that I cannot agree more with Ben Wache and uh, Kojo, uh, the PURC what, what, is the I, I'm curious, though. I'm curious. I, I beg your pardon. What, why, why point to the vice president specifically? He's the head of the economic management team. Right. So if I'm talking of a ministry, I'll be talking of the head of the ministry. And that's why I took on Mr. Peter Meu for instructing Ghana Gas to classify a company as an industrial company when you have VRA and you decide you won't do that to VRA. And once he is the head of the economic management team, he ought to bear responsibility for the decisions of the economic management team. That is one. Two is that the PURC is the economic regulator. It's the duty of the PURC to ensure that there's financial viability in the sector. And so for me, and I made this very clear yesterday at the meeting, that apart from the PURC, no other governmental entity has a right to step in and begin to vary prices, unless that entity makes it absolutely clear that it is subsidized and will therefore pay for the difference. When we do that, I'm sure we will make some progress. What are you looking forward to as Ghana Gas comes before the Parliamentary Committee? What are your expectations? I have a plethora of questions. I have a plethora of questions for them. I have a plethora of questions for the PURs, and more importantly, for government itself. I mean, a lot of things doesn't make sense for me, and we need to investigate those issues. Oh, uh, not, you see, finally, finally, I think that ideally, GMPC's function should end at the flange when they discharge the raw gas. Because like crude oil, when they sell crude oil, what happens to the crude oil in terms of finished products, be it petrol, be it diesel, they don't go following up on that. So why is it that when it comes to gas, they want to get into isopentase, they want to get into what happens at the downstream level. When you do that, GMPC loses focus. And so I think that the, that decision by the economic management team was a very, very bad decision. And that is the cause of the problems we are facing today. Hopefully, when uh, further engagement happens with, uh, between the GMPC, Ghana Gas, and uh, the Parliamentary Select Committee, we'll get some more details on this and remedy the situation, if possible. Mr. Jinapo, we're grateful for your time. Uh, John Jinapo is a former Deputy Power Minister. Let me wrap the conversation with Benjamin Boache of ASEP. Your final take. No, I think, Ben, the sad reality uh, is that the regulators don't have power. And it's the decisions of ministers that really define how things are done. And that is why you have, you know, Energy Commission writing to say that they are not aware of any policy to discount, uh, uh, you know, tariff for some specific uh, industries, even when it had been done already. Um, we need to respect the functions of those institutions and reduce the role 
of the ministry and ministers to policy coordination and initiation. It doesn't mean that they should just sit down every day and just be writing policy documents. They need to consult, they need to engage, to stress test decisions before it becomes policy. But it appears that is not what is being done. So PRC approved its own tariff, you know, by commingling all the gas, and somebody has taken part of the gas and selling at a discount. So how do we ensure that the sector is optimized? And these are the problems that Ghana faces today. And as we speak, the energy sector is indebted, you know, to the tune of over, you know, $2 billion. Even this year alone, they have accumulated about $1.4 billion as of now. All right? So if we continue to take these poor decisions, then the debt accumulation will persist and the citizens will have to pay instead of getting development uh, from the taxes that we pay uh, uh, to our government. Mr. Wache, grateful that you could uh, take the time to join us as well. All right. And that is Benjamin Boache of ASEP. Now, having spoken about uh, gas and GEMSA and the GNPC and all the other dynamics, uh, we're going to take a bit of a breather. But when we return, we're going to be talking football. It has to do with our national team, the Black Stars, as they get ready for Qatar 2022. They've been lacing their boots. They were thrashed by the Seleção, the Samba Boys of uh, Brazil, by three goals to nothing. Then we played Nicaragua yesterday. Uh, a better performance, but we still aren't putting the ball behind the net. Only one goal was the difference between a very low-rated Nicaraguan team. Up next, we face high-placed Switzerland. How is the cookie going to crumble? What can we expect? Muftar Nabila Abdullahi and his team will be assessing that on the AM show right after the break.